here, here's the deal. This morning, we're actually uh, in this series on base camp. My name's Dave Nelson. If you're new, I'm the lead pastor here at K2, so we want to welcome you today. Uh, but we're getting, it's week seven, and we're actually talking about the route, which you could also say, just what's the way? If we're going to go on this adventure with God, what is the route? Well, can we all just say that is definitely not the way? <laughs> That, that, that is def, definitely not it right there. And I know, like, we, we watch this, and, and that's pretty obvious. And there are times, can we just admit, that it is a little bit embarrassing to be human uh, when we see what human nature can actually do. And I, I don't know if any of you have trampled over somebody in the mall or at Walmart or whatever. But we all do this. See, we just do it a little bit more discreetly. <laughs> but it's true about every single one of us. Our anger easily tramples over people all the time. Our selfish ambition does that. It's like when you have selfish ambition, as the Bible talks about, just this, I'm going to do what I want to do, and you don't even see the people around you sometimes. You're so bent on having things done your own way. And then sometimes uh, we knock people over like that, and we actually blindside them. They don't see us. That's called like gossip (laughs) and slander. It's one of those times where we totally are mowing people over by talking about other people behind their backs. And it's the same thing. It, it, I, I, if, if we could just be honest, there isn't any of us. Probably this week you had a chance to look in the mirror and say, I'm embarrassed to be human. <laughs> just even in our own hearts and lives. So hopefully, right? Hopefully there's a different way. Hopefully God has given us a chance to live in something different, and that's what we're going to look at today, is the route. So let me just recap again what's happened here in this base camp thing. We learned that there's this awesome, loving, holy, wonderful God that whose way is perfect, and it's really good, and he's the one who knows us, and he loves us crazily. We've been over here on the other side trying to figure out life, doing our own thing, and we separated ourselves from him, and he said, that's just not good for me. So he sent Jesus Christ, came running after us. We didn't have to try to get back to God. God actually came to us through Christ, totally wiped out this thing called sin, this thing inside of our heart that loves ourselves more than God or more than others, totally forgives us for all of that, reconciles us, brings us back, and what God has said is, I want to invite you to live life with me. That's the adventure. You actually get to live your life with me, and I will be with you. And so then we talked about, so here, here we are. He gives you a guide, who, who the Holy Spirit, who Jesus said will come right beside you every second of every day. So you got your guide, and you got your field manual, okay, so that you know what is true. How can I know for sure if I'm running the path? You got your field manual. You got your guide. Last week we learned that we rope up with a team. So here we are today. You, got, you have all of that, and now it's like, okay, now what do we, what do, we do? <laughs> and here's what you do. Jesus comes to every single one of us once we're ready, and he simply says two words. Follow me. Follow me. And we think about that, you guys. There's a great verse here where Jesus said in Matthew 16, 24, he said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. If you're ever going to experience this adventure with God, Jesus is saying the only way that can happen is you got to deny yourself. you got to take up this cross, which means, okay, I'm going to die to myself, and then you got to follow him. That's what we do. So Colossians 2.6, which is years ago, has just become this tiny little really powerful verse to me. And it just says this, Just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to walk in him. Just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to walk in him. So we talked about the first step. How does the first step on the adventure take place? We we learned that God pours grace. You are saved by grace through faith. The only way an adventure with God begins is God, you, you finally realize, oh my goodness, he loves me and he moves towards you. That's his grace. And then you respond in faith. You don't work. You don't get religious You simply believe in him and you trust him with your life. That's how you received Christ. You received his grace by faith. And when you did that, you received Jesus Christ. But notice what it says. Now, the same way you did that, keep doing it. That's it. The way you received him is how you walk in him. So here's the cool thing. God is going to continue to initiate with you. He's going to continue to prompt you. He's going to continue to love you. And the whole walk is respond by faith. You just, you know, the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. And so that's how this whole thing works. But the other thing you've got to notice here is how did you receive Jesus Christ? He is who? He's what? 
Okay, I'm going to wake you all up, get your coffee going, it's cold outside. How did you receive him? Jesus Christ as Lord, which means what? I know it's weird because we don't have lords these days. At least I hope you don't. But if you had a Lord, the Lord calls the shots. When you received Christ, you received the one who gets to lead the way. And you follow him. That's how you received him. As you received him as Lord, continue to walk the same way. That's what the adventure is. Follow him. So I, I don't know about you, but sometimes we can find, and, and you, you know, if somebody says, hey, follow me, we go, well, where are we going to go? I don't know, just follow me. Well, what's the route? <coughs> follow me. <laughs> That's what it is. Now, that can either be really frustrating or that can be really exhilarating. And it all depends on who you're following, right? It all depends on who you're following. So I, I'll just tell you, um, how many big skiers out there? Are you guys psyched? Okay. Yeah! Okay. <laughs> yeah! I love it. You know, uh, I'm not a big skier. I grew up in Michigan. Um, the closest ski hill to where I lived, this is no lie, was a garbage dump. It literally was a big pile of garbage that they eventually made into a ski hill. That was Mount Holly. That's right. But even my family, we never skied. So I didn't ski until I was 23 years old. And guess where I learned how to ski? Ohio. So, again, really big, you know, big ski place. And so I, I came out here, and then I married with Susie, who grew up in Colorado. I mean, her dad was a civil engineer in the town, so she got to ski for free. I mean, you guys should watch this when we go. So I get up there, and I'm on a blue, you know, and I'm working it. Working. She just kind of stays up and watches me, you know. And then all of a sudden she goes, and she just comes flying down. And I am like, that's my wife. It looks good. But, uh, so I'm not a good skier. Let's just put, I've done it probably about a dozen times. And uh, when, right after we moved here, my sister had a really good friend who came out, uh, Rowan Sandy, and, and they're big time skiers. They have a place up in Park City. And so we were skiing with them, enjoying the blues and stuff. And then he said, hey, follow me, because, follow me, is what he said. And he goes, because there's this one black hill that I love, and I know there's a blue right next to it, and so we're just going to go through this path. And I'm like, okay, cool. So we're going along. Well, the path, I, she's already laughing at me. Um, so we're on this path, and it's really narrow. Next thing I know, we're in, in it. When you, how many of you aren't very good skiers? Any of you guys? Oh, most of you. Look at this. We are not a skiing church. Very interesting. So you guys can relate with me. So I'm on this thing, and I need a place where I can go, right? Isn't that what you need? You know, This like really quick thing doesn't work for me. So we get in this narrow path, and we're going through the woods where I can't, slow myself down at all. And I'm just, you know, going along, and all of a sudden, whoo, bam, and I just did a face plant, right? I mean, I, don't, I still don't know what happened. My skis got caught, and I just face planted right in the snow. So I'm like, okay, humility, it's a beautiful thing. Pull myself up, and we keep going. We break out of the trees. There's no blue. There's no blue in sight anywhere. Was it double black, honey? She says no, but it was double black to me. It's triple black. <laughs> you guys, this is one of the most embarrassing moments ever, man. I get out of the thing. I, I can't even stand up on this hill. I'm like, how does anybody ski on this? This is a cliff. And I, I literally can't get up. And I tried to move, and I just, I just start sliding. So I'm sitting there, and Susie's standing there. I'm like, I don't know what to do. And then all of a sudden, this mom and dad come with three little elementary kids. And they just go right by me, man. I mean, oh, my gosh. It was the most embarrassing thing. I was so humiliated. I couldn't even slide down the hill. And, I, 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 and it just ruined me the whole day. Now, when Ro invites me to go skiing again, and he says, follow me, I'm probably not going to go with him, right? But on the flip side, man, when you have someone who said, follow me, and they take you a cool place, and you experience, you just want to go with them. My kids, I love to do that. I love to do that with Susie. If we do an anniversary or something, I love to plan out the whole thing. She has no idea what we do, and I just say, come with me. And hopefully, you know, it's good enough that she'll do that um, as we move forward. So follow me. Jesus Christ says, if you want to experience an adventure with God, you just got to follow me. Okay? So what's that look like if we're going to follow Jesus? I'm going to teach from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Let me read it for you. If you have your Bibles, you can pull them out. If you have version on your iPhone or whatever, you can pull that up. We actually have our notes are on version. if you want to follow through that way. But look at this verse. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us 
and he gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Follow God's example. Follow this and walk in this way. You guys ready? Walk this way. I, I so, if I could play, that would have been fun. All right. So let me pray for us. We're going to pray, and we're going to ask God to show us what it means to experience the adventure of living life with him, which will be walking in the way of love. All right? Let's pray.